May 23, 1983. The day I graduated from college was also the Brooklyn Bridge Centennial. A gay artist, Bruce Kratzley, took this picture. A few years later, he died of AIDS. I dreaded AIDS back then more than anything. It was the future for so many gay men. I'd be gone in a flash, like these fireworks. But in this photo, there's something that lasts, the bridge. It's a symbol. The artist is using it to remind us of what endures, human accomplishment, powerful connection, love. 2001, a whole new era. The fireworks in this photo are actually two embryos in a saltwater solution being expelled through medical tubing into a womb. The womb belongs to our hero. She agreed to let you see this sonogram. The embryos are Mark's and my children. So much dread of an early death and surprise. We get to create life, make a family. How many of you have kids, grandkids, think you might want to have kids? Yeah, that's great. Uh, in America today, most young gay men and women say they want children. They might want children. This is the future. Of course, some people still don't get it. We applied to a respected nursery school and we asked the director, how will you handle Mother's Day? She answered, mommy is central to the development of every child. On Mother's Day, your children will each make something to take home to mommy and give it to whichever one of you plays the mommy role. <laughs> She's a nut. And we withdrew the applications. But in red state America, the mommy role is woman's highest calling and her exclusive domain. That's where she gets maximum self-esteem and also financial protection, since it's man's duty to provide for her. Here's a mommy role example from Dave Fleischer. The decisive group of swing voters for Prop 8 were mothers of school-aged children. 300,000 switched their votes when they saw a particular TV ad. In it, a little girl bounds into the kitchen and shows her mother a children's book that she got at school, in which Prince Charming doesn't marry a girl. The ad is perfectly wired to shock red state mothers. Why? Deep down, they hope Prince Charming's going to value and protect them. If he doesn't, it wrecks their self-esteem and economic security. This is why it scares them that men, let alone gay men, are raising children without a mother. It scares them that they might not be needed. It scares them that individuals, LGBT or straight, integrate breadwinning and child rearing. It gets really political and elections from the school board to the White House become battlegrounds in the mommy wars. If red state America claims to speak for traditional motherhood, what's the deep truth we speak for? Love. Love isn't some strict Victorian code. Love is vibrant and kinetic like this icon from gay artist Robert Indiana, where the O definitely isn't straight. <laughs> Love is who we are, it's what we stand for, and when it comes to families, we love our families, and they don't conform to some Victorian ideal either. Think who can relate to that. Our allies in this are working mothers, divorced dads, really anyone with a little flexibility about the mommy role. Out of necessity, our community has developed a huge knowledge base about this stuff. Artificial insemination, surrogacy, Complicated laws. Straight people ask us about adoption and IVF. As one way to share the knowledge, FEC, Family Equality Council, is starting a network of experts on their website to be syndicated and we hope added onto on the sites of the New York, Chicago, and LA centers and on Facebook. Mark and I are helping launch it and we hope gay and straight people wind up using and supporting it. Still, there's so much we don't know because academic research has ignored our families for so long. Mark and I have started supporting academic research alongside gay and straight donors and foundations like Gill and Arcus. But private dollars go only so far. One big breakthrough is the $15 million federal grant 
that the LA Center just got to study foster parenthood of LGBT kids. It's important to stimulate more government grants. We think we know about our family's demography, our strengths, our needs, but we don't. We still need a lot of basic research. Research also identifies allies and shifts policy. It helps GLSEN make schools welcoming. It helps FEC prevent the state where we are right now from amending its constitution to prevent people like us from adopting children. For our community, all this is the future. It's family. It's love.